I want to share a story about the person I dedicated today's class to, Rabbi Ronnie Greenwald. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Jewish Heritage Center, made a retreat for secular Jews who wanted to have a warm and inspiring Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And Rabbi Ronnie Greenwald and his wife joined the services. As the sky darkens, the sun is about to set over the horizon of the day before Yom Kippur. The shul is filled with men and women who came especially to observe Yom Kippur, to celebrate Yom Kippur, many of them wearing the white kittel, as the holiest day of the year is about to begin. Around five minutes before sunset, before the beginning of Yom Kippur, a van pulls up to the hotel where the Jewish Heritage Center is running its program. And I kid you not, outcome of the van, seven boys and three girls, they're all wearing beach wear and flip-flops. You look at them and you know right away that they grew up in Orthodox homes, not just in Orthodox homes, in Hasidic homes, in Hasidic communities. They all went to yeshiva, they all went to girls' schools, Hasidic girls' schools, <coughs> and basically they were trying to escape for Yom Kippur. Where's the best way to escape? You find a hotel and you chill out. Oy, 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 the nightmare begins. They walk into the lobby and suddenly they see <laughs> there's a bunch of Jews who are praying, and many religious Jews who are there. So they go to the clerk and they say, we want back our deposit. This was a mistake. We need to go somewhere else. This is not a place for us. He refuses. He doesn't want to refund their reservations, and he refuses their request. They didn't have a lot of money, so <coughs> they were standing there confused. They didn't know what they should do, what should be their next step. They really didn't want to stay among all these people. They were trying to escape these people. And now they ended up in the lion's den. Rabbi Portnoff, Rabbi Portnoff from the Jewish Heritage Center, <coughs> excuse me, from the Jewish Heritage Center comes over to them and he says, guys, I know you're not comfortable. I see you guys are perturbed, but I just want to tell you, we don't bite. We're not going to bother you. Don't worry, we're not trying to threaten you. We just came here for our program. Do what you want. I just want you to know that the shul is always open and you're welcome to join us whenever you want. You're also welcome to ignore us if you want. Don't worry. He was trying to be very friendly and polite, make them feel comfortable. And <coughs> they took their rooms and they went to their rooms and the rest of the crowd went into Davin Kol Nidre. Rabbi Portno said, I was happy that the teen stayed and I remembered when Chili Posen from the Mazamrim said, God wants you to deal with the Hasidic kids too. So we didn't know what to do, so he brought them to us. And I thought, you know, maybe after Yom Kippur, I'll have a chance to have a shmooze with them. And I went to Davin Kol Nidre, and after Yom Kippur, hopefully we'll connect, maybe they'll come to the meal, and we'll be able to strike up a more warm and friendly conversation. But Ronnie Greenwald had a very different reaction. At night, they went to their rooms. But shortly after coming down to Davin in the morning, he sat out in the lobby, <laughs> waiting for them to come down. And as they came down, he began talking to them, first one-on-one, -on -one, and then as a group. He listened to them, he validated them, he validated their emotions, he encouraged them. He made them feel they were not outcasts, but welcome members of the family. In fact, he did not daven in shul that Yom Kippur. He davened his tefillahs privately whenever he fit them in. But most of the day he spent hanging out with these kids. Now you have to understand, these kids went swimming, they were drinking beer, but whenever they showed up in the lobby, he was waiting. He was out there, smiling, welcoming them, no tension, no criticism. No flinching, no awkward faces, <coughs> no anger. Just pure love and acceptance all day. He spent seven hours of the day with them. Again, they went to do their own thing and they wanted to get rid of him at some points of the day, but then they came back to the lobby. He just schmoozed, fabranged, listened, laughed, joked, listened to their stories individually and in group settings. As Rani said, these were broken vessels. Shivrei Kalim. This was the first time they felt accepted within a religious Jewish environment. The hours crept on. 
And as the sun was about to set, and everybody went into shul for Ne'ilah, Rabbi Portner says, we turned around and we see that two of the boys came into shul for Ne'ilah. He says, we invited them back for Sukkot, for Simchas Beis Hasheva, and they and 25 of their friends showed up. We kept up a connection, and a hundred of them attended the Jewish Heritage Center for the Hanukkah party. He said, we had to create a special division for Hasidic young men and women because of that connection that Rabbi Rani created on Yom Kippur. Rabbi Portner was in Israel when the news arrived a few years ago that Rabbi Rani Greenwald passed away. <coughs> he passed away suddenly in Florida. Rabbi Portno attended the funeral. As he left the room where the funeral was taking place, he was approached by a young woman. He did not recognize her. She was dressed very in a very refined and modest way. She introduces herself and she says, you don't remember me, but I was one of the three girls who came to the hotel a few minutes before Yom Kippur. I struggled terribly in high school. I wasn't sure which way to go in life. I just joined this group of outcasts. And Yom Kippur, we did not want to have part of. Too much anxiety, too much religion. I spent most of the Yom Kippur drinking beer and hanging out in the pool. But that day, Rabbi Rani Greenwald touched my life in such a profound way that I changed my direction completely. I went to a regular Beis Yaakov seminary in Israel and nobody even imagined the upheavals I went through before that. I'm now in Israel and when I heard that he passed away, I had to come to the funeral just to say, thank you. Rabbi Portno said that that entire group of kids who came to Yom Kippur today have all built beautiful Jewish homes based on Torah and Mitzvahs. He says they were so alienated, they were so cynical. They felt that even intermarriage is fine for them. Hasidic kids. Some of them even despised the idea of having a bris, a circumcision, which secular Jews do. That's how far they were. But when Ronnie Greenwald gave them his Yom Kippur, they saw what Judaism really is, and they saw who they really are.